Okay, so we're on the last night. I just listened to the last video, so I know that I went over and picked my own bed. Um, but I did want to mention something from that happened th Wednesday night, the night before, when we, before the ceremony, I took my first cup and I went back to my bed and a woman came over specifically that I hadn't met before. She was one of the helpers and she came over to my bed and she said, I just want to make, I just um, want to make sure you're okay. How are you doing? And I looked at her and I said, I'm great. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing fine, thanks. And she said, okay, good. And walked away back to the shaman. So I found that to be strange, um, but I think that that has to do with um, how this all culminates on, on Thursday night. So um, also too, the shaman that came from Colombia, from the Amazon, his name is Taito Juanito, and the first name is T-A-I-T-A, -T -A, Juanito, J-U-A-N-I-T-O, and you can Google him and find him. He is the student of a 109-year-old shaman, um, also from Colombia, and I believe uh, they work in Inga, which is I-N-G-A, and you can look up more of that. Um, you can Google that, but... Um, so it's not the same every week. But this shaman is world renowned and people pilgrimage to him. So it's very fortunate that we had him come to us. Also Thursday before, I don't think I mentioned before the ceremony, I had my second cleanse because I wanted to make sure as much as I could was out before I started. So that happened. I think I had that like, um, four or five o'clock. It was like right before the ceremony. So we picked our bed. The people who didn't have much of a reaction during the week, they got to go first and get their own cup. And um, I, I didn't go in that group because I assumed that would be the strongest batch and I didn't want that. Again, Pachamama had told me to uh, just one cup is enough. So uh, I certainly didn't want the strongest cup. And I had had a reaction, so it was valid for me not to stand in that line. And um, so I went, they called for three different sets of people and I went in the last group and uh, my friend also went in that group. So stood in the line, got my cup, drank it. And um, I don't think I drank the full cup because I, every night I would take my cup home to wash it and there was a good amount I, that I found in it left over the next morning. So, um, so I don't drink, think I drank the full cup, but I, I did have an experience. So I, I think that you get what you need. So I think I got what I needed. And so I laid on the bed and this time I'm so glad I didn't take the strong, strongest batch because I could feel it. I could feel it go down and work on everywhere that it moved to everything. Um, you know, down my esophagus, into my stomach, and all the way through. And uh, and I had to breathe deep, um, the way that Pachamama had, had shown me how to breathe from Tuesday night. Breathe in, just breathe through it, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and it felt it go down. And as it went down, it kind of squeezed. There was a squeezing sensation in every place. And, and I felt good about that because I felt like that meant it was working and healing me. So I wasn't scared at all. Um, I did have some visions. They were fleeting. They weren't very elaborate or memorable. And um, I didn't hear much from Pachamama that night. But uh, when I did call to her and ask where she was, she said, don't worry, I'm here. I'm always with you. Uh, you, don't, you just don't need to hear me. We don't, we don't need to talk. So um, you got this. So that was, that was good. Um, I spent m most of the night laying on my bed under the blanket and hardly moving, kind of like I did when I was young and had nightmares. Um, not because it was scary, but that was just comfortable. And I felt like that's what I needed to do and that's where I needed to be. So, um, so that's what I mainly did. And um, I... Uh, most of the night, so now we're talking about like over 12 hours, I 
mostly sang in my head. So I either said thank you repeatedly, thank you, thank you, thank you, or I sang this song, um, which is like a TikTok, famous TikTok meme now, and there's a, a small boy, I think it's in Africa, and he sings a song, thank you for sunshine, thank you for rain, Thank you for joy. Thank you for pain. It's a beautiful day. Yay, 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 yay. It's a beautiful day. Yay. And multiple people have, I don't know what they call it, um, also added into that meme and created, or reel and created other reels and TikToks with their music. And so the whole night I sang that or said thank you. And, um, and that goes along with the, I mean, that's the highest vibration energy that you can have. And um, Abraham Hicks says that living in gratitude and being in gratitude, the feeling of gratitude is even a higher vibration and gets you more aligned than um, meditation. So I think that had something to do with it. It was just a natural reaction that I did that. And, um, and, and afterward, the shaman did mention uh, being in a place of gratitude is very important and saying thank you. So that just confirmed, um, you know, that I was doing the right thing. So um, I lay down, medicine's working in me, mainly physically, I can feel it. But, oh my goodness. So people started purging right away, right away. And, um, Vomiting, I, I don't want to use the term violently because that sounds so negative, but violently, meaning re really like, like it's, it's, it's not great if you focus on the sounds of what other people are doing. It's really not great to hear, so I just don't focus on it. Um, but similar to Tuesday, I did think, oh, they started music already. And then I realized, oh no, they didn't start music. They're working on someone who reacted quickly. I mean, this was the quickest we've had so far, the quickest reaction within, you know, easily 20 minutes. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to scare anyone, but you know, it sounds like people are possessed. And um, this one woman who's actually in my group, um, they're over her and she's hacking and then she's yelling, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Why am I here? And she, so they eventually take her outside. And at one point, I think when she was still inside and she was near me too, one, at one point she yelled, I am Lilith. Ah, and started, and I'm, I'm like, whoa, what is going on? Um, so they took her outside. You could hear her, she's screaming, but it doesn't sound bad. I mean, it, she's just screaming. And so, a uh, side note, I had taken the shuttle to the airport with someone the next day who talked to her about it. And um, she said she had an amazing experience and some of it she didn't really remember. So you can't, we can't judge someone's experience just from the outside external manifestation of it because you just don't know. Um, it's, it's wild. So, uh, so this is all going on. I'm in my bed and sometimes I have the covers over me, but my eyes are shut most of the time and I'm saying thank you. And, um, you know, and I think that has to do with me asking to never see um, these visions. So I think part of it was um, Pachamama protecting me from um, seeing anything that would get me out of where I was and that would, um, would make me scared and change my vibration. So I definitely... I listened, you know, I listened and, and I had a great experience. So, um, I will stop there and meet you in the next one.